When we looked at the orbits created by the force of gravity in episode 18, we thought about how the force of gravity always pulls the planet toward the star. As long as we give the planet a low enough velocity around the star, gravity will keep the planet in orbit. In addition to the gravitational force, we can think of a planet's orbit in terms of the types of energy present in the system. The first kind of energy we need to think about is called kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is manifested in our planet moving. The higher the speed or the greater the mass, the more kinetic energy is present. We can calculate the kinetic energy of our planet as one half times the planet's mass times the square of the planet's velocity. Since velocity is a vector, this square is calculated using the Pythagorean theorem. The planet has more kinetic energy when closer to the star and less kinetic energy when farther away since the force of gravity causes the planet to get faster as it approaches the star. The second kind of energy we need to think about is called potential energy. Potential energy is manifested as two objects interacting through a force. In this case, we're interested in the gravitational potential energy between the planet and the star. For objects in space, we can calculate this potential energy using an equation that looks very similar to the equation for the gravitational force. We take the negative of the gravitational constant and multiply by the mass of the star and the mass of the planet and then divide by the distance between the two. The reason we're interested in energy is because the total energy in the universe must remain constant. We call this the law of conservation of energy. Since our star and planet are out in space, they experience essentially no air resistance, so this universal rule means that the total of the kinetic energy plus the potential energy must remain constant no matter where the planet travels. Now remember, our animation routine is based on forces. It doesn't know anything about energy, and there's no trick set up to guarantee that this rule of conservation of energy will apply. So we can use energy to test whether our code is working properly. Here we set up three different graphing curves, one for the planet's kinetic energy, one for the gravitational potential energy between the planet and the sun, and one for the total of the kinetic energy and the potential energy. Here in the loop we calculate the two types of energy, kinetic energy and potential energy. These calculations are set up exactly like the equations we saw earlier. Lastly, we graph the current value of these two energies, plus the total of the kinetic energy and the potential energy. Let's start out by giving the blue planet a closed orbit around the star. When the planet is closer to the star, the kinetic energy is higher and the potential energy is lower. When the planet is farther from the star, the kinetic energy is lower and the potential energy is higher. The kinetic energy and potential energy always mirror each other so that the total remains constant. We can also notice that this total energy has a negative value, indicating that the potential energy is winning over the kinetic energy. Now if we switch to a scenario where the planet escapes from the star, we can see the energy obey the same rule. As the planet gets farther away from the star, its kinetic energy decreases and its potential energy increases, both moving toward zero. This time, however, the total energy is a positive number, indicating that the kinetic energy is winning over the potential energy. This is the key difference between orbiting around a star and escaping from a star, whether the total energy is positive or negative. You have now learned how to study the various types of energy involved in gravitational orbits. Follow the link in the description below to complete a set of activities to help you learn more about energy.